So if you've had your gallbladder removed and you're dealing with some chronic diarrhea issues, and, and maybe you've researched this and you probably saw that, well, it looks like about 20% of people who have their gallbladder removed will have some diarrhea issues. But it appears from my point of view, and when you look in the comments below this video, you'll probably see a lot more people. It just seems like a higher percentage of people that have had their gallbladder removed will have these issues come about. And it seems that what they're saying is that there's about 20% after surgery that will have this diarrhea issue. But I'm gonna put a link to a study in the description below this video that shows that over time, up to 50% of people who have had their gallbladder removed will end up with these chronic diarrhea issues. So in this video, I'm gonna help you understand what's going on and the different options that can create this diarrhea problem and steps you can take to correct it. You don't wanna miss this. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So to understand how these loose stool issues can come about, we really need to understand digestion and the gallbladder's role in that whole process. So when we eat food, our stomachs make hydrochloric acid or HCL. And this HCL is meant to help us acidify that food so that we can start that breakdown process. And then once that food is acidified, it'll leave the stomach and come down here into the duodenum, which is like the first 10 inches of the small intestine. Some people like to say duodenum, I like to say duodenum. And then once that acid product comes down here into the duodenum, then that's when the gallbladder squirts this alkaline bile down onto that acid product and it helps us neutralize those acids. So basically bile is this soapy substance that's made by the liver and then it sends it down here to store it in the gallbladder and the gallbladder's job is to concentrate that bile. So what happens is when the acids leave the stomach, that's when the gallbladder squirts this alkaline bile down onto that acid product. So you get these opposite pHs meeting each other and it creates this chemical reaction. Like if you were to mix baking soda and vinegar together, like when you made that stupid volcano in the third grade and it all sizzled and freaked out and here comes the volcano. So those opposite pHs create a reaction that's like a sizzle that really helps us bust that food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. So that bile coming down is really part of our ability to get the nutrients out of the food that we're eating. The problem is for a wide variety of reasons, someone's bile can become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. So then it won't flow out of the gallbladder like it's supposed to. And if it's staying in the gallbladder, it will continue to concentrate. It'll concentrate until it turns into sludge or even into stone. So when we have this dysfunction here, and the gallbladder is no longer functioning and hey, I'm having gallbladder attacks. That's the worst pain I've ever even heard of somebody having. Let's go ahead and yank that out of there so we get the gallbladder removed. So now what we need to understand is how this digestive process is going to change. So basically, when this stomach is making the stomach acid and it leaves, then it triggers this gallbladder to drop that bile down on there. But if the gallbladder is gone, then there is no storage for that bile. So there's no bolus of bile to come down and help neutralize the bolus of acidic food product that left the stomach. So what happens is this stomach acid is made to help us break down proteins, turn those into amino acids. Well, guess what your intestinal tract is made of? Yeah, it's protein. So if these acids are not getting neutralized enough, then they're still in this acidic state that kind of goes through the intestinal tract and starts to basically digest the lining of our intestinal tract. So the body doesn't want that. So it says, well, let's get this out of here. So it brings all the water it can to the intestinal tract to cool those acids off and rush it out the back door as fast as it can and become lifting off the toilet like a rocket. So this helps us understand why if there was not enough bile there to neutralize those acids, that it could create a chronic diarrhea problem. Now there's bicarb in the pancreas that's supposed to come down and supposed to help neutralize those acids a little bit as well. But there's a lot of people that feel that some of these functions are triggered by some of these other functions further up the line. And maybe there's not enough bicarb because that bile being alkaline is really what helps us neutralize those acids. So this is a very common reason to have some chronic diarrhea issues because there's not enough bile to neutralize the acids that are coming through. So now that uh, stool that's leaning more on the acidic side is irritating 
that intestinal lining. Now here's the big question, why does this only affect some people? Why wouldn't everyone that had their gallbladder removed have chronic diarrhea? But what we need to understand is that if a person is not making enough stomach acid, then the food is not going to be really acidified when it leaves. It's not really going to need to be neutralized. So if both sides are dysfunctional, then the stool is going to be at the right type of pH to kind of move through the intestinal tract at an okay pace. And some people will even see chronic constipation issues after they've had their gallbladder removed. And that may be because this stomach acid is not being produced properly. It's very common for someone's stomach not to be producing enough stomach acid. And what we have to consider is maybe this hypochlorhydria or a lack of stomach acid may have even been happening before the gallbladder surgery. Because what we know now is that this gallbladder is triggered by the stomach acid leaving the stomach. So I'll put a link to a study below that shows us how there's a really strong link between using PPIs or antacids for an extended period of time and gallbladder sludge and gallstones. So it kind of helps us understand that the encyclopedias are right when they say that this bile is triggered by stomach acid. And if it's not being triggered by enough stomach acid here, then the bile stays in the gallbladder. The gallbladder is not triggered to squeeze it down, so it stays in there and it continues to concentrate into sludge or into stone. Now that's not at all to say that anybody who had their gallbladder removed didn't have enough stomach acid. It just shows us with this study that that really confirms that the encyclopedias are right and that this function really matters and that this may have been the cause for some people's sludge or gallstones to develop was just that the gallbladder was not being called on because of the lack of stomach acid coming down. So if someone had a lack of stomach acid and they have their gallbladder removed, well, there's not enough stomach acid in there to really create the problem of this unneutralized acids moving through the intestinal tract. So they're not going to have diarrhea. And since the stool seems to move through the intestinal tract at a pace according to its acidity level, if the stool is more alkaline, it's going to move slow. And then the stool will get hard and dry up and create this constipation issue for the person. Now there's other causes of constipation. If you're dealing with constipation, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on understanding constipation. But what we want to look at is how do we correct this problem if this is the cause of our chronic diarrhea issue. And what a lot of people use is ox bile. And ox bile is just a supplemental form of bile where you're not having this bolus of bile come down, so you're going to supplement and put it into the system instead. So you put it in through the stomach, and then it comes out through here, and then it can help neutralize those acids. It can also be beneficial to help us digest our fats better, because bile is what we use to emulsify dietary fats. The problem is that taking ox bile can really magnify some symptoms if you're doing it the wrong way. I'm not going to go into all the details here, because it can be a little bit more complicated, but I'll put a link in the description below or for our video on understanding mistakes that people make with ox bile. And you'll want to go through that to see about the timing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to give you a brand and I'm not going to give you a dose because I'm not allowed to do that. But beyond that, the dose should really vary from person to person depending on how much stomach acid they're making, how much help do they need neutralizing the acids that are leaving the stomach? So that's going to vary greatly from person to person. But if a person's diarrhea is being caused by this overly acidic stool not getting neutralized, then using some ox bile can help neutralize those acids and slow down the stool and correct the problem. Now let's look at another issue that can create this loose stool issue once the gallbladder is removed. And this is the problem that most of the medical field feels like is going on, and that's this bile acid diarrhea. So remember, that these acids can really irritate the intestinal lining because they're too acidic. But a substance that's overly alkaline can also irritate that intestinal lining and then the body's like, all right, let's get this out of here really fast. So if this gallbladder is removed, this bile doesn't get stored and it just continues to trickle down from the liver down through this biliary pathway into the duodenum and through the intestinal tract. So if a person really doesn't have enough stomach acid and there's just bile kind of going through the system all the time, that overly alkaline bile, since it didn't mix with the stomach acid, is really going to irritate this lining and can create a diarrhea response. So an overly alkaline stool can be just as irritating as an overly acidic stool. So in that case, if a person helps to acidify their stomach a little bit more 
and their diarrhea slows down, then that can be a good indication that, oh, that was probably caused by bile irritating the intestinal lining because everything was a little bit too far on the alkaline side. Now another issue that can be creating a diarrhea issue is if there's some type of infection or overgrowth in the stomach or in the small intestine. That could be like a SIBO issue, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And if there's an overgrowth there, then that can create a diarrhea issue. And what happens is, I'll put a link to a study below that shows us that hypochlorhydria can lead to these gut infections because the stomach acid is like the barrier to the whole body. So if there's not enough stomach acid, then the bacteria or bad guys come in on the food that we're eating and they set up camp and they raise their kids and they have a keg party and it's a great time. And what we understand is that for the stomach to make enough stomach acid, it needs minerals and nutrients to be able to make hydrochloric acid. So our body has the ability to access those nutrients from the food we're eating when we create this sizzle of the stomach acid meeting with the alkaline bile and creating that reaction that helps us bust the food apart and get all the minerals out of that food. So if someone is not really busting their food apart correctly, then they're not getting all the minerals out of their food and then the body may not have the resources it needs to make enough hydrochloric acid. So that's opening the door for these infections to come in, set up camp, and create that diarrhea type response. So you can see that it's not all going to be the same situation for every person. There's a variety of issues that can create this problem and it's really about the person looking at their body and trying to figure out what's going wrong and what needs to be corrected. In my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters three and four, walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and what steps might you be able to take to correct those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And then you can just jump to chapters three and four and that'll help you figure out that process. But just remember, if you want to supplement with the ox bile, it's really important to understand that if somebody's stomach is already alkaline and maybe they're bloating and constipated and having acid reflux and all these symptoms that can come along with low stomach acid, if they put ox bile through that, then that ox bile is alkaline and it can magnify some of those symptoms. So you really want to watch that other video to see about the timing and figuring out how that's going to work the right way because if you take the ox bile with your food, you could really magnify a lot of problems. So now that you understand what could be creating the problem for you, then I want you to jump over and watch our video right now on how to avoid mistakes using ox bile to see if that's going to be an appropriate step for you to take. Let us know how it goes.